Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for coming by today's video and today I have an awesome tutorial for you. It's not a long one, but it will show you how I edit my videos using Luminar, which is a competitor to Lightroom, I guess you could say. However, their price points are really good. I find their stuff very easy to use and if you've watched any of my other videos or anything on this channel, you'll know that I look for programs and ways of doing things that have the shortest learning curve. So some people might be really good with you know, After Effects or um, you know, Photoshop and that type of things. I don't have, one, the patience, I guess, or two, the time with the family I have running you know, a business, uh, you know, getting my real estate business up and running, working full time for the state like I do. So I have a lot going on. So when I wanna sit down and edit something, I wanna be able to do it, do it well, and also have a real polished look to it. That's why I like Filmora um, Pro or Filmora 9. And I think I've done some videos on those already, um, you know, which has definitely helped me improve my video game a little bit. But now I've really been trying to focus on my photography as far as, you know, creating content for real estate, you know, to building my brand, you know, working with my clients. I made the huge mistake when I first started shooting um, on my... Um, on my uh, Panasonic G7, which is what I'm recording on right now. And I know some people are gonna be like, oh my God, you need a full frame. I know I have a, sense, a crop sensor. I know it's not a full frame camera, but it's my go-to camera because it's very versatile. For me, you know, the Micro Four Thirds, it's, comp it's small enough, I can still get the job done. It has a ton of power to it, and yet it doesn't take up a lot of room in my kit bag when I'm going to a real estate, you know, um, listing appointment and I'm there to get documents signed and then I have to go in, you know, start shooting photos and videos. So, you know, I've got the drone that I can pull out and do aerial stuff with. Then I pull this camera out, throw it on the gimbal. I get buttery smooth footage for doing a walkthrough. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, you know, no, no matter what you have for equipment, everybody says, you know, what kind of camera do you have? And uh, I'm kind of getting off topic here. Everybody says content's king and stuff like that. It is, but being comfortable with the equipment that you have in order to produce whatever content you're trying to produce is what's most important. You know, I remember back in the day shooting videos of Jake, and he's 11 now, um, but when he was born in 07, I had a little flip cam. Uh, so it was like this little camera, like this big, shot 1080p, I think, or 720, and it had a little USB port that would pop out the side, you put it in your computer, I think you get like 30 minutes on a clip on it. My point is, don't worry about who has what camera, what camera I have, what camera your buddy has or your girlfriend has. As long as you can go out and make good content with those cameras or the tools that you have available, who cares what kind of equipment you have? Point is, just embrace what you have. Don't worry about going out and getting the next greatest and latest thing. Let's get onto the computer and take a look at how I edit video for um, real estate photography and you can use this for anything else because all the principles are pretty much the same. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, please, if you would, at the end, like, subscribe down below, check us out on Instagram, or check me out on Instagram, or Bowman Realty Group, my real estate team on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, uh, obviously Facebook, and here on YouTube, I would really appreciate it. I just realized I'm pointing down an awful lot, like it's gonna change something, but if you would, check out the videos, check out our links, check out ourselves on social media, give us a like, give us a follow, we would be more than happy to follow you back, and, uh, Comment, tell me what you think. Tell me if uh, if I'm doing it right or if I completely suck. I'm good with either way. I can take the criticism. I got some thick skin. So let's get to it. Okay, uh, I lied. We're not jumping right into the computer right away. I was talking about uh, how when I first started shooting, I shot a lot of stuff in JPEG, which is completely wrong. If you're not shooting in RAW, you're like me, you're wrong. You need to shoot in RAW. If your camera shoots RAW JPEG, if you really wanna do that, you can, I don't see the need of it. But the RAW gives you enough data to where you can really enhance a photo from its state. Now I shoot mostly flat, so I turn down all the saturation, all the contrast, everything on my camera, on the internal settings. That way there allows me to color grade and adjust the photo a lot more in post. So make sure you're doing that. I meant to say that in the beginning, I kinda got a little sidetracked on my tangent. So now I'm going to go back to the computer. All right, so we're gonna open up Luminar 3 and uh, then we'll select the photo and I'll show you guys how I do the editing with Luminar. This is very comparable to Lightroom. I know a lot of people go back and forth, which one's better. Like I said before, it's whatever you're most comfortable with and I really like the flow here with this program. So we're gonna stay with it. So let me see if I can find some photos here. Let's see what's here. Um, 
Uh, something I can work with. This one here. And once you open it up, you double click on it, it opens it up. And you can see before on the side you had all of your files, um, all your folders based on date for when your photos were taken. And you know how some were highlighted, some weren't. The ones that weren't highlighted, those just had video clips in them. And uh, eventually this should load. There we go. So in your workspace, you want to make sure that you have it set to professional. And uh, it just allows you raw development and stuff like that. You have your um, photo strip over here with all your different photos. And you can scroll through them if you want to pick a different one. And, and then down here you have your presets or your luminar looks. Um, sometimes they're decent uh, for the lifestyle one. Every once in a while I'll do the HDR look, which is this right here. And sometimes I think it's just a little much. Like it really brings out like this popcorniness of the ceiling and it blows this window out. So I really don't want that. So let me just do an undo. And what we're going to do to get started is the first things I do is I bring down the highlights and I bring down the whites, and then I like to up the shadow and the blacks, kind of lighten the room up a little bit. Now this window's still a little um, overexposed. I don't know if there's much I can do to correct that. It was kind of my own fault while taking the photo. So I'm just going to kind of play around with it, bring up the clarity a little bit, and then I can change the tint, you know, the color of the room, and then the temperature, you can warm it up a little bit. And let's see here. And then you have your uh, kind of like an automatic um, boost for the photo that you can use. It kind of just does it automatically. And sometimes if the sky is really in the photo, you can use the sky enhancer. The dehaze just kind of cleans it up a little bit. Now, I'm for one not 100% on what each and every one of these do. Um, if you go back to filters, um, let's see here, if you go add filter and you click on this little eye right there, it tells you the info of each one. So you have your sky enhancer, your accent AI, your tone, uh, clarity, dehaze, denoise, it, it goes through and tells you each one. So that's kind of helpful if you uh, aren't quite sure. And, um... Let's see here. I don't know if I necessarily want to mess with the... All right, so structure kind of gives it that, brings it out a little bit into, of the photo. And one thing that I like to do is you can click on the brush. Click on the brush, and then you can hit paint. So if I want to... I'm gonna do, opacity or turn that all the way up and I just want to enhance this part here and then you can hit the little eyeball it tells you what you've got what you've missed because I don't really want it on the ceiling because it makes the ceiling look kind of funky even though we got a little bit of it on there. So we can hit uh, done. Now when we use this, it should only bring up those spots and leave the ceiling alone, which is kind of nice. We'll bring that down a little bit. You can also choose your LUTs if you want. And let's see, so let's play around with this S a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent for the shot. And again, this is just all by eye as you're adjusting it. So if you want to see the before and after, you know, there's the before, there's the after. Kind of highlighted some of the stuff uh, within the photo. The back window looks a little bit better. Not the best. There's, you know, I'd rather see it a little more clear. Um, but that's my own fault. So I'd have to go. I've got a couple of the different photos over here where I could adjust it. And then uh, you just export it. If you like what you see, you just go to File, Export, and then it exports 
where you want it to. And that's how I uh, adjust my photos for uh, real estate. You can use it for any other type of photo you're doing. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if it helped you out at all. And uh, if you would, just uh, hit that like button, hit that bell, and uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.